Now, the Republican Party uh, chosen candidate, Ron Johnson, says the first move that he would get behind uh, toward deficit reduction would be to repeal health care reform. How do you respond to that? It tells you whose side Ron Johnson's on. He's on the side of the insurance industry. He wants to take away 80,000 Wisconsin businesses' tax credits that they're getting to help them pay for insurance. He wants to take away the ability of young people to stay on their parents' insurance till they're 26. He wants to take away the ability of over a million Wisconsinites who have pre-existing conditions that are protected under this bill from being cut off from their insurance. He wants to give back to the insurance industry. So Johnson wants to give a victory back to the insurance industry when we actually finally beat them. And that's the difference. Whose side is he on, the insurance industry? Whose side am I on, the people of this state who need better health care system? Let me just address this as well. Uh, Johnson's worldview really is that entitlement spending is out of control. And he says that actually extending unemployment benefits uh, encourages people not to get a job. I think it's heartless cut off unemployment benefits at this point, and if that's his position, I'm interested to learn that. I also think it's pretty outrageous that he uh, thinks we should get rid of Medicare and Social Security. That is, that is his position, apparently. He says that those are entitlements and they're unsustainable. I will fight hard to keep Medicare and Social Security, to make them fiscally responsible, but again, the question is whose side is he on, whose side am I on? He is against the seniors who security and Medicare, and that is a big, big difference between us. Oshkosh businessman and primary candidate Ron Johnson joins us from Oshkosh, and thanks very much for doing so. Well, thanks for having me. Well, is it actually true that you decided to run for U.S. Senate after watching Fox News and Dick Morris put out a call for a rich guy from Wisconsin? No, I mean, that, that's kind of a cute little story, but b bottom line, what, what uh, made me decide to run is as I watched uh, what was happening in terms of all the spending and the debt and the, really the unsustainable nature of that. Uh, and then when they passed uh, the, the health care bill, which I, I also believe is just a huge budget buster on top of a totally broken budget, that, that's, you know, you know, there's very serious issues going on in this country, and that's why I decided to run. What's your first budget uh, uh, deficit busting move? Well, the first thing I'd like to do is I'd like to repeal the health care bill. I mean, that, that will be, like I say, a huge budget buster. I mean, I relate it back to when they passed Medicare back in 1965. They uh, estimated 25 years out in the future, into 1990, that Medicare would cost $12 billion. In fact, it cost $111 billion, 10 times the original estimate. I think that we'll, we'll see similar results from the health care bill. So. Um, just trying to get to know you a little bit, I know I've read that your kind of foundational book is, is Atlas Shrugged, and, and the, the theme there is this idea of kind of looters and, and moochers against the, the people who, who make the wealth, the, the productive class. Is, is, it, is it that stark for you? Well, I, I think it is certainly one of the things we're concerned about. I mean. Uh, one of the concerns I was when, uh, you know, President Obama was elected that, you know, had we reached that tipping point where people contributing into the system versus those, you know, taking from the system, those, those receiving the benefits, uh, were, were the producers being outnumbered by the, uh, the people receiving the benefits. And that's, that's a dangerous uh, situation, d dangerous scenario for any society, quite honestly. Now, in this economic climate, though, where we've got uh, expenditures uh, of things like unemployment uh, insurance uh, and, and programs to, to help, help the poor, um, are you opposed to, to those kinds of things? You know, when, you, when, you give, when you continue to uh, extend unemployment benefits, people really don't have the incentive to go, go take uh, other jobs. You know, they'll, just, they'll just wait the system out until their benefits run out. Then they'll go out and take, uh, you know, pr probably not as high-paying jobs as they'd like to, to, to take, but that's really how you have to get back to work. I mean, you have to, you have to take the work that's available at the wage rate th that's available. How would you change the way we tax people and businesses? Well, I, you know, I think we, we are in a global in, uh, economic environment here, and capital will flow to where capital can make the most money. So I think we always have to, in business, you benchmark. You know, you benchmark your sales, you benchmark your costs. I think as governments, we also have to benchmark what are our tax rates. You know, how does that relate to other countries in terms of attracting capital? So I think we have to be extremely mindful of the fact that, uh, you know, currently, for example, corporate income tax, and you know, I, don't, I don't pay corporate in income tax. My business is an LLC, and we pay the personal income tax. But, uh, you know, the corporate tax rate is higher in the U.S. than it is anywhere else in the world, and that is not good from a standpoint of capital flow into jobs in America.